Hello, so in this lecture we are going to discuss something known as X-ray lithography. In the previous lectures you have learnt that we can use uh, UV light as a tool and we can pattern structures into a polymer film. Now we are going to see can we also use X-rays for this purpose. Okay, so you know that X-rays are very high energy radiations, right, much higher than the UV light. And X-rays can also penetrate very deep inside an object. You know that they are also used for medical purposes and so on. So they can penetrate deep through, deep inside in, uh, any object. So obviously, they are also better materials, uh, better radiations for making uh, micro scale structures or even nano scale structures because of their uh, very small wavelengths. The diffraction is also relatively much lower. So are they being used in the case of microfabrication? First, we need to ask ourselves, what do we want from our structure? So if we have, um, you know, in the case of semiconductor industry, you have mostly 2D structures and there the aspect ratio of the structure is not terribly important. So what is the aspect ratio? Aspect ratio is the height divided by the whatever is the footprint, whether it is a circle or a square or whatever is the structure uh, shape. So height divided by the footprint or the diameter of your footprint, let's say, that is what is known as aspect ratio, which means how tall your structures are. So basically, in the case of a 2D structure, in the case of thin film fabrication, you don't really much care for the height of the structure. They are very thin, very, you know, the height is very little. But when we move to structures like MEMS devices, when we move to energy storage devices, especially energy storage devices, because that's also relevant for our course here, what we need is we need high surface area for a lot of applications. Huh? For example, for supercapacitor applications, also some battery applications, what you need is a high surface area. And when for the same uh, footprint, if you can increase the structure heights, hmm, then you can create much more surface area. So in these cases, what we need, we need taller structures. Hmm. So here, x-rays can be can be used for making very deep structures with you know very 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 high resolution so the spacing between the two structures can be much smaller compared to the photolithography patterning okay so here i have shown in this uh, schematic if you this is your um, photolithography for film like structures where you will mostly use positive resist when you want to go to slightly higher structures you you use a negative resist if you want to go for very high, very tall structures, then you use X-ray lithography. Now here, why I have written conductive substrate, you can also use uh, silicon also. It's a uh, P-type sil silicon is used in many cases, but conductive substrate here um, is used for a specific purpose because one more step, we can go one more step further after this lithography, we can do electroplating. So I'm going to describe that entire process to you here. Okay, so first of all, we make a polymer film similar to what we do in photolithography by spin coating or any other technique you make a polymer film you can also in in the case of x-rays you can take thin, thin pieces or sheets of polymers also because they can penetrate very deep so you take this kind of material and now you know that x-rays can really degrade the polymer with a very high energy so you also can actually purchase a lot of um, spe specific resists for X-ray uh, lithography. Huh? So there is uh, this material known as PMMA polymethyl methacrylate, which is one of the common resists for X-ray uh, lithography. There is also another uh, resist common, uh, commercially known as SU8, which is a phenol formaldehyde resin. You get a separate SU8 for photolithography and another version of it for X-ray lithography. Okay, so now how do you make the mask? So what we do in lithography, anything that can mask the UV light, that can prevent the UV light from uh, entering, uh, from reaching your structure, that is useful. You can even use, um, you know, pattern, you can use inks, for example. But in the x-rays, in the case of x-rays, you need a mask which can absorb the x-rays, which does not let the x-rays pass through. And you know that x-rays can pass through a lot of things, including human body, you know. So you need now some heavy metals like lead or gold that can completely absorb your x-rays. So the masks for x-rays can be very, very expensive. Hmm. The rest of the area, you can use quartz sheet, you can use any other sheet. In fact, you can even use carbon because remember, now we don't need to leave those areas transparent where our light should pass through. They don't have to be transparent because we are not talking about optical uh, wavelengths anyway. X-rays can pass through a lot of things. For example, carbon is a very good substrate. Carbon 
is um, a graphite especially is highly transparent to x-ray so you can make you can take a piece of graphite and make the structures using for example gold and that's your mask for x-ray lithography it doesn't have to be optically transparent so now the masks become much more expensive and the mask fabrication becomes very uh, costly and that is one of the reasons x-ray lithography is only used for high-end applications because of mostly because of its cost also the fact that x-ray production is not that cheap hmm. so also the masks are not that cheap okay now um, what I also mentioned to you before is what you can do like I, I already said that x-ray uh, lithography is very expensive so what you can do is you can just use x-ray lithography for making one structure which you use as your master mold what is a master mold somehow you take a structure and now you want to make a mold hmm, which can be removed from this material so obviously that will have the negative pattern on top of it now however you can use that mold you insert it inside another polymer and then cross link it by heating or by anything else and then again remove the mold then again put it in another uh, material and then cross link it and then remove the mold so that is like you make the master mold using x-ray lithography but now can you directly make the master mold out of polymer master mold needs to also be very mechanically strong it should also be chemically not very reactive so polymers do not make the best molds hmm. so what do we do for that purpose we make a metal mold how do we do that by electroplating the structure that you have made using x-ray lithography and that is the reason we use this conductive material or conductive substrate because now you can use it as one of the electrodes and you can perform electroplating of that so commonly used electroplating materials are nickel hmm. uh, so typically as you can see in this picture you will take this structure now do the electroplating with nickel for example and now you have this inverse structure that is made of metal and now you can remove your resist hmm. so resist removal is simple like any other any chemical that can dissolve that resist that you can do now and now you have this very high very tall structure the negative of it in a mold hmm. and now you you can use that for making multiple structures now this entire technique which is a combination of x-ray lithography then electroplating and then the using the mold hmm. making the mold using the mold all together this entire technology is known as liga x-ray liga hmm. and this liga it is actually a german word which stands for lithography galvanoformo and abformo hmm. galvanoformo means electroplating and abformo means mold making Hmm. So this technology was developed in 1980s in um, in a place known as uh, IMT in Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. In fact, before coming to IIT Mandi, I was a scientist right there at IMT, not on the X-ray machine, not on the uh, place where, but exactly in the department where this X-ray lithography was developed. Liga was developed in the 1980s. Okay. So anyway, now one more question is that how do we where do we get these X-rays from? Hmm. You know that medical x-rays are um, available in, uh, you know, there are uh, x-ray tubes and so on. You can generate low-cost x-rays at many places. But those x-rays do not, they have a mixture of wavelengths. So even within the x-ray range, you have different wavelengths. In the case of very, the, depending on how good you want your structures to be, if you want really, really uh, small and, I mean, the narrow gaps, but very tall structures, in that case, you need maybe deep x-rays. So you need really good quality you know wavelength filtered x-rays so in that case what we have is for x-ray generation we have really huge facilities which are known as synchrotron radiation source so how do they look like this is like these are you can see this is a circular um, building hmm, which is which can be in diameter it can be as long as one kilometer so you can imagine see this is a very uh, almost three kilometer um circumference that is a really huge building and what do we do in this this is this entire building we make electrons circulate in this very large circle hmm. 
Why do we do that? Because we know that any charged particle, when it has an acceleration, when it moves um, in, a, in a circle, then what will it do? It will lose some energy. And that, that energy from the electrons is in the wavelength ra uh, range of X-rays. So basically, when electrons are accelerating in a circle, hmm, and this is how they are being accelerated with the help of magnetic field, with the help of magnetic dipole, you make these charged particles, electron beam circle in this big building, and then X-rays are released tangentially. Hmm. At many places, many locations. Now, what do you do? You make your office in one of these places. Hmm. And you put a screen there. Hmm. That is where now you have a lot of parallel x-rays coming. And that is where you perform your lithography. So, you can imagine this entire technique, entire building, entire structure. Everything is very expensive. Of course, how, however, you the, the quality of the x-rays is very good at synchrotron radiation sources. Okay. So, there are also other applications of synchrotron radiation sources and that you can read separately. So, other than uh, lithography also, you can uh, do a lot of laser physics, particle physics work and so on. Okay. Now, what happens as I mentioned that after wavelength filtering, you can use these uh, x-rays for various applications. Now, this LIGA thing where you make the mold, you can also do it with uh, the structures that are made out of photolithography. So, then in that case, you will call it UV LIGA rather than X-ray LIGA. However, in the case of X-rays, the walls are very smooth and very straight, which is not the case in photolithography. So, there are a lot of advantages, of course, of uh, using X-rays for, uh, for lithography. You can get really very high-end um, structures, very nice and sophisticated, very small in dimensions. But at the same time, it is very expensive. So that is the disadvantage. Okay. Now, that is in fact the reason the UV Liga was or UV lithography was developed after X-ray lithography. Hmm. First, X-ray lithography was developed because of the fact that it was so expensive. UV lithography was afterwards developed, which was also in the beginning called poor men's X-ray lithography. Hmm. So uh, that is how it goes. Anyway. One important thing I would like to tell you is uh, there are um, extra synchrotron facilities are very expensive and very uh, there are very few facilities all over the world. In India, we have two extra synchrotrons known as INDUS-1 and INDUS-2 and both of them are located at Raja Ramana Center for Advanced Technology in Dorset. So if you get a chance, you can go there and perform some X-ray Liga.